Are we live? Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies, the live video podcast for people who love to talk about movies as much as they love watching them. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk about tonight's episode. Uh, tonight, my good friend Jim and I are going to overanalyze the other half of Barbenheimer. Barbie. Uh, but first... Let's bring on my co-host with the most, Winnipeg's own Kubasa King, Mr. Jim Chaboyko. How you doing, my friend? Good. Am I muted? I, I hope you are not. We got you. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> You're not wrong about Kubasa King. We had sausages for dinner, so uh, <laughs> that was that was eerie. But, uh... <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. All right. Uh, Jim, we've had of late a uh, couple of mm -hmm. people who've passed in the in the film world. Um, yep. why, uh, why don't you maybe uh, kind of uh, kind of talk about those people uh, first before we get into this flick? Uh, sure, that cool yeah. with you? Yeah, yeah, and and you know more to celebrate their uh, lives and careers rather than <laughs> start it off on a downer. But uh, yeah, we lost uh, Paul Rubens, uh, also known as uh, Pee Wee Herman, last uh, last week uh, at the age of seventy. Uh, that was a shocker when I saw it come. Uh, I think it came on my phone even as a, as an alert of some sort. Uh, but uh, interesting, I, I I made my wife watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which was suddenly available on our version of HBO, which is called Crave up here in Canada. And um, it was A, nice of them to make it available, and B, it was kind of fun to watch uh, again and and also to get that... Uh, get that sense of, of him at his at his height. Uh, and, and it... You know, not a bad movie. I remember seeing it in the theater. I don't know. Uh, did you see it in the theater? Do you recall? Or I, I don't believe I did. Yeah, I remember going to the. I think it was on in the colony, and uh, you know, it's always more fun to go see a comedy in a theater when people are laughing around you. It starts off slow, but uh, you get into it, and it's different. I had conflated his character in his TV show with his character in the movie, and they're a little bit different. Like, one's a little sort of edgier than the other, but uh, it, it was good to catch up. You Are know, you after seeing, seeing all the... it gets a little edgier in film? Uh, well, he, he's <laughs> sort of, he gets peevish with people, and he, he sort of gets, you know, there's a hobo that he sort of hangs out with and they're singing too many I, public I'm, domain I'm just, songs. So I'm, he, I'm screwing with you, Jim. <laughs> so, he, well, good. he throws himself off a train in exasperation, which I don't think is the kind of peewee you would see on the, uh, he, he'd be more like the, you know, cucumber, you know, kind of guy on the, on the kids show. But uh, uh, yeah, so uh, a loss and, and from everybody who spoke uh after his passing apparently he was a real decent uh guy to, to his, his friends and even to people production assistants and that kind of thing uh, the kind of person that's uh nice to waiters and uh, you know his, his life wasn't without uh without controversy but um uh yeah kind of an interesting in, interesting guy uh yeah who, who eventually evidently was a, a decent chap so uh, that's uh, otherwise but so there's that, um, and then um, uh, we lost uh, William Friedkin this week, uh, a, a guy who, with his sort of members-only jacket and his dyed hair, it didn't seem that he was aging all that, all that quickly. I, I, you know, you can hear him in uh, fairly recent interviews. Mark Marin did a really good two-hour interview with him really? a little while ago. Yeah, and and typically you might want to keep your eye on the WTF his podcast. Uh, that because what he usually does when somebody dies, I don't know if he's done it lately, but he'll just take it from behind the the, the archived paywall and he'll re re uh, broadcast it, repost um, it, repost it. Yeah, so it's a good one. It's a really good one. Mark's uh, even a little bit nervous. You can tell because uh, Freakin's a bit of a straight shooter. You know, a, a no BS kind of old. Uh, well, they called them new Hollywood in, in uh, uh, the 70s, but maybe it's a, an old new Hollywood kind of thing. But, you know, you take a look at his run of movies there, and he's got 
within two years, he's got The Exorcist, he's got The French Connection. You know, you go a little bit down the line, he's got Sorcerer, which I still haven't seen. It's it's one of the things, one of my goals this year. And uh, To Live and uh, Die in L.A. To Live and Die in L.A. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it was for oh. me, it was my first introduction to Willem Dafoe. And I thought, I thought it was a, uh, back in the day, I thought it was a, a great movie, actually. And I one of like... the best neo-noirs. Yeah, maybe yeah. Ever. Yeah, deserving a, of a, a, a rewatch, whether for our show or personally anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. See if it uh, lives up, it holds yeah. up. Yeah. Well, and Sorcerer, too. I, I'm almost embarrassed because that's sort of like the... Uh, you know, the hipsters, oh, you haven't seen Sorcerer yet, <laughs> you know, kind of go-to. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he, he um, there there was a, a sensibility to freaking uh, almost like those really alpha male directors, but not, it was a little bit different, too. There, there's, you can go on YouTube now, and the Criterion Collection is interesting. They have... Uh, actors and directors and writers going through their movies and they're letting them, you know, pick up, pick movies to take home. And uh, he he did a he was there in their little movie closet about eight years ago, and you can still see the joy in his face. At this point, he would have been seventy nine or something, and he's going, "Ooh, this is a good one," and "Oh, this made my day," and uh, you know, "Ooh, I've never had a copy. This is hard to find." So, you know. It's a little bit of that too. The joy of the movie was still there for uh, for uh, Friedkin there, and uh, I think that was apparent in in most of the interviews that he did uh, towards the end of his life. So, yeah, a couple big losses, uh, but uh, definitely you know people made who made their mark. You sort of want to appreciate them and maybe take a look at some of their movies, uh, uh, you know, in the next uh, little while. Well, Jim, thank uh, thank you very much for that. I uh, really appreciate. Mm -hmm you bringing that perspective and even bringing it up, uh, bringing it up back in the last show. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I, you know, I see this stuff in social media and I'm quickly kind of going, oh, oh, that's sad. Um, and then moving mm -hmm. on, right? Uh, but you yeah. had sent me a link to Herman's The Show and it just reminded me of how, it, honestly, <laughs> how bad crazy it was yeah. in the best way. Mm. Uh, you know what? It really did have something special, something absurd, yet with heart. You didn't, you didn't feel like, uh, how can I put this, Jim? Like, it, it's some cool kid. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? You know, uh, it's 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 some cool kid making fun of us all. You know, there was yeah, a, 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 yeah, a heart, a kindness, perhaps, to it. Yeah, he was earnest without yeah, and, and at the same time absurd. You know, and those two things don't nor, don't I don't think they commonly go together. But uh, yeah. yeah, there there's uh, some earnestness there, and no condescension either. I don't think. Uh, mm. uh, you know, well, to and his it certainly or, seems to fit the stories you hear about how kind he was to the fans, to mm -hmm. uh, uh, fellow actors who maybe weren't quite at his level or, 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 like it just goes on. Yeah. That SNL short you sent me, Jim, was, <laughs> even oh, yeah, that yeah. seemed to be, uh, <laughs> folks, for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll see if I can't get a link down below, uh, but it's a bit of genius, one of those SNL shorts with oh what is his name again Andy Samberg Andy Samberg mm. and you really do get an idea that Andy Samberg is is really kind of going I'm doing a bit with Paul Rubens I'm doing a bit yeah. with Pee Wee Herman you know that that there's a kind of damn <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know here let me damn <laughs> um all right uh, Jim you know what? With that, with that out of the way, that sounds so pejorative. Um, but we do have to get on um, back to the flick. Oh, Jim, back to the flick at hand. <laughs> we of course are talking about Barbie. Here's the log line, Jim, from IMDb. Mm -hmm. 
Barbie suffers a crisis that leads her to question her world and her existence. And I'm like, woof. Um, Jim, I, I, I do. I think that's without a doubt one of the worst log lines we've read from IMDb to date. Uh, how about this? Barbie, Barbie, facing the existential dread of death and cellulite, comes to the real world to find the girl who is playing with her to save herself, the girl, and perhaps even Barbie land. That's much better, actually, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Jeez Louise. Anyway, Jim, why don't you tell us who's who, who's who's who in this flick? Sure. Front, well, in front of and behind the screen. Well, uh, famously, we have uh, Greta Gerwig, who's directing, and the script is written by uh, Gerwig and her partner, Noah Baumbach, who's known for various uh, marriage in decline movies like Squid and the Whale, and I believe Marriage Story, um, uh, and starring, of course, Margot Robbie, uh, Ryan Gosling uh, is, is second. Uh, second credited, um, we have uh, Canada's, well, actually, three Canadian men, <laughs> one Australian women, woman and three Canadian men. Uh, uh, Michael Sarah is in it, Simu Liu is in it, um, uh, and uh, Kate McKinnon, we have Rhea Perlman. It, it's actually quite a quite a hefty list there, uh, even uh, Will yeah. Ferrell, uh, Jamie Demetriou, uh, who's hilarious on British TV. He's given about three lines, and uh, he's one of the corporate uh, bag men beside Will Ferrell. But uh, yeah, loaded cast. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the gentleman who played uh, Malca, uh, was it Malcolm X in One Night in Miami is actually playing uh, basketball can in this. So a little bit of a, a different, uh, <laughs> a different uh, uh, role for, for him, I'm, I'm sure. But um, yeah, just a very, and a lot of cameos and stuff too. So uh, kind of fun. Okay, Jim, let me, uh, actually, let me first, uh, folks, uh, for those who are enjoying this tonight, or if you're, if you're joining us live, great. And even if you aren't uh, you're catching this on the replay, please like, uh, whoopsie, please feel free to like, subscribe, and ringy-ding that bell. <laughs> Many thanks, Mr. Jaboyko. Yes. All right, uh, Jim... Let's uh, let's keep moving forward, and I think it is, it's you know what, it's time to get into the spoiler zone. It is. Um. Whoopsie! I just got those things going on everywhere. <laughs> it's all about likes and subscribes. Uh, Jim, of course, and I'll put a link up here. You and I, we saw this over a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. You know, or a week ago, give or take. I actually almost to the day we saw this a week ago. Yes, Thursday. Um, yeah, yeah. We did record a see it or skip it. So again, a link to it up here. Uh, we both said, you know, we weren't going wow, but we both gave it a gave it a see it a a a, a, a solid ish see it. Maybe not a maze, but yeah. give it a solid. Yeah. Has your now that you've had a week to think about it, what are your thoughts now? Uh, you know, I, I guess overall that, um, you know, it was enjoyable. Uh, it's sort of the water cooler movie of the summer. Um, it, it's been strangely made political. <laughs> so that's that's there. Um, I, you know, and this movie wasn't made for me necessarily. I'm wondering, and I, I was going to ask you this question, Sometimes there's this sort of after burn. Uh, aftertaste has an, uh, not a great connotation, but like an afterburn when you see a movie and the next day you're thinking about it, or you see a movie set in a certain place and the next day you're thinking about that country or something. There's some there's some um, after effect, and I didn't necessarily while I enjoyed the movie, I didn't necessarily find myself you know. I wasn't in reverie the next day. I was. I didn't really think about it that much after I saw that. Whereas something like Oppenheimer, you're kind of like, ooh, <laughs> you know, like it. It sticks with you a little bit. It's a little bit existential. Um, so yeah, I, th that was my. I guess my takeaway. Enjoyable. A little bit of a confection, uh, confectionery kind of quality. What did you like? Did it strike I, you, you know as the what, same Jim, way? Or? I. The more I think about this movie, 
the less I think of it. Mm -hmm. um, this is not to say that it is mm -hmm. junk. That said, I, you know, confection's almost being too good to it. I, I'm starting to think of it as a, a grocery store birthday cake. It looks great from the outside. It's got lots of icing and it's got all the basics. Hey, you chocolate mm -hmm. cake? Well, the it tastes like chocolate. Um, but in no way am I, Jim, thinking, not even, I can't say wow, mm -hmm. more say meh. Like, mm -hmm. I, I just meh. I do. I think less of it. I think less of its politics. It is political. It is a political movie. <laughs> like mm -hmm. to for people to say it's been taken over by politics. Well, come on. It's it yeah. it does say something. I don't think it says much. Um it's like adventurous in 1978, like when the original Charlie's Angels came out. Um mm -hmm. But, of course, because of the times we're in, especially in the United States, even that is too much. Oh, this mm -hmm. is way too much feminism for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, although, and Jim, remember, you and your, you and your, uh, your spouse, your spouse uh, joined us, and she brought up some great points on the night of. And the more mm -hmm. I think about this, the more, unlike No Hard Feelings, which I actually think better of as time yeah. goes on, even yeah. with it pulling its punch in the third act, it's mm -hmm. better than this Sobeys cake, this, this grocery store cake that gives you that hit. But at the end mm -hmm. of it, it's like, I, I don't really feel like I ate anything good. Like you say, it, there's no great aftertaste. There's no, it doesn't leave a bad taste. It leaves no, no. taste at all. Um, you know, it's like, I want to say something. And then it's it's so milk toast about what it's saying um, that I think it's almost uh, regressive. Actually, I'm not even going to say that. It is regressive. Um, yeah, that's kind of my that was, a, again, like the more I think about it, the less I think mm -hmm. of it. Uh, of course, that isn't yeah. Jim. <laughs> I Here, let me let me pull up some. Let me pull up uh, the Rotten Tomatoes. No. So, of course, it's certified fresh, but, you know, at 80, 88%. Um, oh, but, <laughs> and you'd think it's like, okay, well, what does that mean, actually? You can tell I bought a pan recently because now the Internet is just desperate to no. sell me another pan. <laughs> um but if we look at the, you know, the big critic scores, here's Leonard Malton. Uh, when I became a father, I searched for movies that would show my daughter positive role models, positive role models. And it was tough going. Barbie makes up for lost time and should warm the hearts of parents and daughters alike. Well, again, in the 70s, sure. This isn't intersectional. Yeah. This is nothing. I mean, they... Hint at gay. This is a film, although it would be criticized in Florida, it at least doesn't violate the don't say gay. <laughs> it would, it can be seen there. It's Florida safe. Mm -hmm. For fuck's sakes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jim. Let me no, uh, no. For fuck's sakes. Um, here's another one. Um, Greta Gerwig serves up, this is from Sherry Flanders, Chicago Reader. Greta Gerwig serves up a frothy confection of fashion and fun coupled with searing social critique. Really? <laughs> I, Jim, this reminds me of how all the folks were raving about The Five Bloods. Oh, yeah. A masterpiece of this or that. And it's like, what I, do we think of it? <laughs> what are you talking about? What movie did you see? Now yeah. I get Jim, kind of like us the, the night after. We still had a nice time at the theater. Oh yeah, it wasn't awful. Mm -hmm. So you kind of come out of the theater with a bit of a high. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, 
But yeah, a week later, you're like, what the hell was that? Yeah, it was a little bit like going to a fun park or, you know, here in Winnipeg, we have the Red River Exhibition and it's got all the rides and the, you know, the roller coaster and all the things that make you nauseous and the, you know, what was the German Der Cuckoo House, I think, <laughs> Der Cuckoo House. But, you know, you go there and, and you're, you, you're uh, entertained, you're stimulated. And, you know, watching yeah. this, there's a lot like going on. Like a grocery on. store birthday cake. The production design's amazing. They have all these open air houses. Like, can you imagine being Great an actor? icing. Going onto this set and saying, I get to it's play like in this. Yeah, yeah. It's like it, it, theater and, with and a lot of money. <laughs> a couple of the scenes in Barbie Land, too, were really, really kind of amazing looking. And whether it was the sort of the, the battle or what happened. I want to go but, back uh, to that's yeah. mentioned and all the pink. In, um, in a couple of these comments. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, again, this pull quote uh, from Damien Levy. In a world where blockbuster films are surrounded by digital landscapes, Barbie's devotion to practical production is outstanding. I, you know what, though, Jim? I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah, but it kind of lends itself. The subject matter lends yeah. itself to that. Yeah, Don't you think? Yeah. Like it, It's kind of set up for it. They could have had yeah. more musical numbers and just put it on Broadway. Well, sort of like to the cats. point. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually not a bad. Or another, another <coughs> play that shows nothing but very well, very well presented. Well, it's made a billion dollars. So if you hold your breath for long enough, it may show up on Broadway. Yeah, yeah, you know. Mm. They've got... Oh, it definitely will. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, apparently, they hit all their four corners. You can take your kids to see it. It won't be too offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to the point where it, they when they go even into the say gay, they go into the real world, and it looks a little bit dull, and and not even not even sort of on purpose. It's not like a, a Tim Burton uh, Joe versus real world. the volcano. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Um, the the uh, what was the Century City? I think right in downtown L.A. or what have you. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it. it, it it's fun and and you know it, is it a bad movie to make a billion dollars or to be the movie of the summer I, I, you know I, there, there could be there could be worse uh, you know some of the, the cast members if you follow them America Ferrara I didn't mention Issa Rae um, uh, you know it's nice to have them be in like such a such a big hit if you if you followed their careers but uh, yeah I mean it, it's and it's odd you like I, I sort of wonder who this is made for as well because you know, a lot of it is obviously for, uh, you know, the female demographic. But my cousin brought his three kids all under 10 the other day. And I was, and I was thinking, and a couple of them were pretty sensitive. And I thought, boy, the, all this talk of death and stuff, is that going to, you know, like her initial thing, her initial kind of uh, conflict is right in the middle of a dance party. Uh, she starts thinking about death. And it sort of changes, uh, you know, she gets these intrusive thoughts. She briefly thoughts. thinks and, of death. Yes. And, and like, it sort it, of throws, and this throws is her the off. Thing. She acknowledges it, period. Mm. Cellulite, which is cured by the end of the film. Mm -hmm. Like, speaking of regressive. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, I, I cut you off there, Jim. No, I, no, I, ju I was just what, thinking. Just, that, it, that, but it's even that, it's the sheer mention of death now is uh, you can't have the kids watch it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> protect us from reality. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, no the other thing for I... you kids. There's <laughs> death, real death, real stakes. Yeah. From yeah. for <laughs> Bambi. <laughs> or Lion King, I guess, is, is another one. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, Can't believe they're um, letting children see the Lion King. <laughs> and, he, and this is, again, these are not radical films. But yeah, at least yeah. they kind of acknowledge life. Yes. Yeah. This is the biggest, there's a bigger more, there's a bigger jump scare for the cellulite. Mm. Yeah. Anyways. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. I just, but I was thinking like, you know, who. Walt 65 is in the chat. Uh, says oh, hey. Old Yeller. Hey, Walt. Yeah. 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 I just My sort friend of, Flicka. you know. 
who uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure who it's for, but I was going to say, can you imagine being Greta Gerwig having to put this out? I mean, nobody held a gun to her head, but we, you know, you and I were joking about the binder sized notes they would have got from, <laughs> from Mattel slash, you know, the producers. Oh yeah. And, and even they can't even win with a child's drawn map in the background, which is apparently caused, I don't know, it's something to do with the South oh, China but Sea. That's the internet. Yeah, the, that, there's so many oh my lines God. that'll affect China because of Taiwan. You but can't I can't win not even, with this thing. Yeah, but Jim, that's just bullshit on Twitter. Zitter, oh, yeah. whatever the hell they're calling. It, is it real? Has it affected its numbers? Has it been barred from a market? No. Has it no. been none of it? So it doesn't yeah. mean anything. That yeah, is yeah. not, that is just, that. that's crazy people who Twitter goes, oh, should uplift that voice. The, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm offended I even know about it. Yeah. And yeah. mostly, well, I, I didn't... even the ding dongs I watch go, you know, you can't believe what they're saying about it. Them. You know, I'm like, who's saying yeah. it? An idiot. An obvious idiot. I, I did pick up on it. I didn't I didn't spend too much time delving into it, but I just but thought. That you you know, and I just... both know. Just shows that maybe we're online too much. Yeah. This, this is not yeah. for our viewers here. You're online <laughs> just enough. Yes, exactly. You're watching us. Get it. Go outside. <laughs> what are you watching us for? No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, it, here's uh, Chris Knight, apparently. Uh, Walt65, uh, Chris Knight, Canadian critic, uh, gave it five stars. Oppie only got four. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So it's I'm, I'm 20% mean, better. Here's, here's, a, uh, here's a question for you. Uh, before we, do you think it's important to participate in this to be part of the pop culture moment? Because there's certainly, it is a bit of a pop culture moment, but mm -hmm. not just Barbie, but the Barbenheimer thing, the, it's crazy ass success. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah, apparently it lifted AMC out of some, you know, the theater chain down, down yeah, the states. Yeah, they're still out going some... under. <laughs> or are they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, um, that's been but, their line. It's, no, give them one a temporary movie ain't going to save know. a company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was well, going apparently... under before, and then meme stock happened, and they were able to, you know, sell some stock, and mm. yet here they are back in the same problem because it's the same problem. These two yeah, movies yeah. aren't saving the theatrical release yeah no you know. but it, apparently it was one of the more and whether you're counting ticket sales or money um one of the more successful summers uh, lately oh, it's, uh, it's huge the, the but two um two movies there but yeah or two movies like this talk mm -hmm. about a I, I i again we gotta wait a year this time yeah. next year then we can say oh that really was the thing or it was an outlier is it part of a trend or is it an outlier? Mm -hmm. You know, what's next? What's the next big movie? The Beetle? DC's Beetle? Well, yeah. And, you know, further, again, the whole writer's strike, you know, depending on how long this goes on, we could be talking about our favorite independent Mongolian filmmakers in about a year's time. So, <laughs> you know, it's just... Uh, well, have you seen Two Yaks yet? I haven't, you know, but, uh, you know... Well, they it, are going back to the table tomorrow. Um, yeah, and yeah. and maybe this time AM BTP. Notwithstanding, it's like, oh my dear lord, here's here's a hot take from an asshole. Pardon my poor friend. Let me let me say that again. Here's a hot take from an asshole. <laughs> so this came out today. Peter Bart, cranky old jerk. What? Um, did a piece, and I'll, I'll put a link on this, came out today on Deadline. He's the editor at large. <laughs> Hollywood CEOs locked in a rich against poor stalemate that their predecessors mostly ducked. And it's it's a kind of, it's not, I'm not even 100% sure quite what his point is, other than apparently that's whither the poor CEO. <laughs> <laughs> that there was one, some old dude from back in when he was a young man 
you know, was a uh, was quite the wheeler dealer corporate guy, but still wanted to make good movies and could spread the wealth around a bit better. Um, but uh, this is hilarious. He thinks that here's where's the quote I'm looking for. Uh, so he's like uh, blames the SEC. Further, the SEC mandated a new era of restricted stock created creating an over-publicized generation of corporate leaders with mind-boggling multi-billionaire, multi-billion dollar stakes, such as Bob Iger, you know, David Zaslav, or the big names like Amazon and Apple. Hence, oh my God, this is offensive, Jim. Hence the creation of what The Economist this week called the overstretched CEO. Yeah. Whose world, Jim, is becoming increasingly dangerous and disorderly. The billionaire members of this clan face mounting pressure, Jim. Mounting pressure. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Resulting yep. not only from economic standoffs like Hollywood's present melee, but also from political crossfires such as Woke-lash. Woke-lash, that's the first. I, that's you know what? My first it's encounter just... with that word. And even yeah, this mm, is a... <laughs> the big bucks uh, requiring, uh, you know, you to do stuff. <laughs> Go this figure. is, again, this is the guy who thinks, <laughs> wither this poor cigar smoking bastard. <laughs> yeah. What about Oh, he looks Jim? so sad. What about this rich guy? <laughs> what about the, who, who will think of the children CEOs? <laughs> what, an, what an asshole. Sorry, again. Oh. What an asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is, uh, uh, Walt uh, chimes in, I think, back to what we were earlier talking about. This is not the start of the 70s auteur cinema, like Barbie. Yeah, I, 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 I well, we're more on that in a second. Uh, newsflash, how about making good movies? <laughs> Maybe that's what'll get people to go. Yeah. Although, I don't think this, this is that good. And it's getting seen worldwide. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I, they... I suspect Hollywood's going to take all the lessons it needs. It's like toy, mm -hmm. disturbingly charismatic star, mm -hmm. a story of some sort. Yeah, and yeah. success. <laughs> yeah. Um. Speaking of which, Jim, what do you think of the story? Does this, or maybe I can bet, what do you think of, uh, I guess we've got two villains, Ryan Gosling, kind of, mm -hmm. and uh, the Mattel CEO, mm -hmm. maybe. What, what did you think? And first of all, am I right in just identifying them as the villains? And... Which is the, like, what did you think of them as villains, as antagonists? Yeah, you know, uh, Will Ferrell was funny. Um, kind of his, it was funny that they, speaking of, you know, whether the CEOs, he's, he's sort of barely hanging on with his fingernails, it seems, to his own sanity. But uh, so he, he was less of a... Uh, well, uh, that looks great. To the CEO yeah. sitting there yeah. watching, how much did we invest in this thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's less of a sort of a direct antagonist than sort of just this chaotic force. I think, like, I didn't really find find that much menace from him. But yeah, um, Ryan Gosling, on the other hand, a lot of people before I saw this, a lot of people praised his performance, uh, uh, and it is, it is, you know, it is. He delivers like he goes all the way with it um yeah you can't say they don't in, commit no 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 but initially he comes across as as and we were talking about this afterwards and it's only about halfway through the movie that i caught on that he, it's kind of got this sort of incelly vibe the super um awkward like you know he's a good looking guy but he's super um what's the word not very, very um uh very, uh, I can't, I can't think of the word. Well, he's, but he's, he's kind of presented as the height of insecure, of, of toxic insecurity. masculinity's yes, insecurity, the yes, insecurity yeah. under it. 
Um, and immediately, like as soon as he comes on, like the very first thing he does is he comes out on the beach to to beach <laughs> that day, and uh, and and another Ken says hello. Simu Liu is his antagonist, and he says hello to him, and he sort of waves him off, and so immediately. Uh, the Ryan Gosling Ken is is sort of a ne- has got negative energy, and and he feels yeah. almost like this sort of almost like a Twitter bro or a YouTube like a Jake Paul kind of bro. Like I immediately didn't like him very much. Now he did great, and he was super funny, and he was kind of uh, he was kind of the dumb blonde of the of the movie, right? Um, yeah. But uh, mispronouncing words and all that kind of thing. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I was I found that. It that could have gone, you know, he, he takes over Barbie's house eventually. And that it got into almost like a, a creepy area. Not almost, but it got into a creepy area that, that he was like a, a possessive boyfriend or there was a force there that I that I think But you that know, they pulled it, back from. I, I agree with you. They did, yeah. But yeah. That but this is the thing. It's like it wasn't creepy enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're really gonna say something about let's say toxic masculinity which is a, a mm-hmm. part of patri- patriarchy mm-hmm. then f- i'm sorry but f- king throw down yeah yeah you know and they didn't um also his presence I mean, is his presence is, is unsettling he's what's that jim say that again sorry his presence is basically unsettling for well, most of the yeah, movie it, i found but it's it's a I mean, honestly too stupid. The character is mm. just too dumb to go. Oh, patriarchy! Like he somehow, like a gestalt, analyzes the real world and goes, "I know what's going on here, and I know how to change everything back there." And it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> Use a dummy. <laughs> Yeah. This is, and this is this reminds me of Jim. In some ways, uh, it, it's only because he's so ch- Ryan Gosling, so charismatic, and he's so ridiculous as a villain that you can't me you can't get too can't get a big hate on for for the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, but otherwise, he's as weak a villain as uh, the. Uh, Oh, that corporate, that corporate d bag in the old guard. No, oh. <laughs> who is just never. It's like really, this is this is who we're frightened of. This is who we're worried about. Rob's favorite movie of twenty twenty, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, it was twenty twenty. Eighty million. It was first year. Yeah, first yeah. first year broadcasting, Jim. <laughs> uh, yes. So he's so this comes to it. It's like. So that's a terrible villain. Um, even the whole idea that as she goes to the real world, kind of like the hobbits, when they leave the Shire, all of a sudden a mm-hmm. bad guy gets back to the Shire and they've got to go fix business at home after they've had this amazing adventure in the real world. Um, which shows that they've learned everything they needed to to be the, you know, clear the shire they don't need any any help anymore they've got more than enough and they totally show it it's a nice actually i think it's one of the better epilogues in a in a such a long story to have that moment um Mm -hmm. yeah it's lovely anyway here though they kind of explain you sort of get why of course sarah man would be able to do this we know who this guy is no Duh! If he's there without any opposition, he'll be able to, you know, t- exploit these poor hobbits. Here, though, mm-hmm. all he does is he comes back with a half-baked idea of patriarchy, and all these Barbies get dumber than he is. And it's like, and then it's explained to us weekly by. Um, you know, in a great tell don't show moment that kind of really sort of <laughs> downplays the actual thing going on there. We, we're America for her. Oh, this is like the 15th century or the 16th century when Europeans came to the New World in the 
horribly named Colombian exchange. Here's polio. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it was, if it wasn't for that, um, and I'm not one of the conspiracy theorists, theorists who figured, oh, yeah, <laughs> Columbus, <laughs> Columbus had an understanding of germ theory and viruses. Um, but if it wasn't for that, the, the conquering of North, Amer North and South America, the Americas may have gone, gone way different. Those diseases just wiped out so many people that by the time the Europeans got there, it's like, wow, it's really hardly anyone here at all. Guess it's ours. Anyway, that's the actual, there's the historical moment. But they just kind of use that as a, oh, they don't have any immunity. So you're kind of, you're mentioning it, but you're not, you're not really, you're explaining something. You're using uh, one of the pivotal moments that really affect the um, uh, history and the relationship between Europe and the Americas, colonialism and imperialism, strictly as a, how do we get out of this jam? Uh, we've got a villain who's dumb AF. <laughs> we need some reason why these Barbies, who are all these complicated or all these competent uh, yeah. leaders and engineers and lawyers and Supreme Court. <laughs> how they all turn into ding-dongs. Mm -hmm. And it's, oh, that's what we'll do. And I think that's that's it, the heart of why this is, after a while, I start thinking about it like a store-bought cake. Not really mm -hmm. any substance to it. Like, the, all the pieces are there. There's a beginning, middle, and end. There's an antagonist. There's a protagonist. They have all the parts. Mm -hmm. And they've knitted it all together. I'm not, Gerwig is a, a, a more than competent filmmaker. But, mm -hmm. yeah, you know what? You got $100 million to make it. Studios, stars, Mattel. <laughs> Mattel, yeah. You know, you end up with hints at what could have been. Hints. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's not like it's, like, it. they do, isn't it like two hours as well? Almost two hours? It's, Bear with it's not me, I'll give you the running one. time in one second. Not 90 minutes or 85. You know, 114 okay. minutes. Yeah, yeah. So they have the time to to move around, but you know it's it is kind of emotionally all all over the place as well. And Margot Robbie has got about I, I counted I think four scenes where where her character is crying, and you know, yeah. understandably. But uh, you know, it, it kind of yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it, it's it totally it's such a such an odd one as well. Yeah. You well, know, because it is funny, and then I think I think was that hey, the movie that, that I was laughing out loud? Laugh I think out loud, funny. Yeah, you know the yeah, uh, and the rest of the quiet or the theater was kind of quiet, I imagine, uh, as well. And you and I were sort of laughing like De Niro and Cape Fear, and, <laughs> you know, like well, just the kind of like <laughs> yeah, for for those who haven't seen it, and well, you're we all know we're in the spoiler zone. Um, there's a great line when they wake up. Because that's what they've, all these Barbies have gone to sleep magically because of the power of patriarchy. Um, as delivered by an idiot, Ken, mm. <laughs> the prototype Ken. Um, anyway, one of them wakes up and goes, oh, it's like I was in a, just in a, a deep dream where I was really invested in Zack Snyder's version of <laughs> Justice League. And it's like, there you go. Yeah. that's funny. And this is, mm -hmm. this is I kind of curious. I, I got to admit, I'd love to see maybe some of the early scripts yeah. that uh, Gerwig and Bombach wrote, Bombach wrote, because it could have been like zingers. And, and this leads me to a, a question, Jim. Is this a parody or a satire? Yeah, I, I was looking at the thumbnail earlier and... and... I, you know, I, I don't even, yeah, is it sort of deep enough for either of those? Um, again, uh, you know, I, I, is this another movie that sort of pulled his punches? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think it just is its own thing. I don't think it's strongly enough 
Jason, do you, what do you think about it? Like, I don't I, think it had any punches left. Looking back at it, it a week later. It got a week, yeah. a week later, unlike, unlike No Hard Feelings, which is mm-hmm. the superior film, in less time, um, or even the Malibu Stacy episode... I said it before in our yes. season, skip it, but now I'm even going to be stronger. It, the Malibu Stacy episode, I think, had more bite in The Simpsons way back when, when The Simpsons mm-hmm. was good, uh, than this does. And part of it is, is that it was jammed into 23, 24 minutes. Mm-hmm. Here, it's stretched out. You've got some bits. You've got, it's, it is in some ways, Jim, it, it'll make a more entertaining, another light, frothy, nothing of a big budget Broadway hit that'll go on forever. Mm. Cause of course. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't call it either. It's not a loving parody of it. There was a nice opening sequence that, uh, mm. great. I think it's it's an homage, but a bit of satire and a bit of homage uh, to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, the, yes. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. monolith point. And that was that was fun and mm-hmm. a little a little hook in there. Right. Not just on uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, but even you get a little bit of reality on how these little girls actually engage with these dolls Mm -hmm. you know how it really works you know that it isn't this corporate fantasy of oh you'll have this and then you'll have this and tick 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 or what we'll see in a a movie or television version of a kid playing with dolls you know Mm -hmm. um toy story did a better job Mm. you know what what can happen to a toy yeah Yeah. (laughs) you know in the hands of um but yeah, I don't, I think it, any, any satirical bite it had in it, any real parody it had in it, it is long gone. We get a pretty, you know, a safe a, a, a 70s feminist explainer. You know, it's, it's. I, I get that I like all these things and there is moments of, Full up, hey, you know, uh, in patriarchy, women get, women get a deal. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but, again, there's hints at uh, homosexuality, but it's never, like, it's hints. Uh, there's no intersectionality. There's no class analysis. There's, you know, this is just the lightest. This is Charlie's Angels feminism, except it's 2023. You know, with uh, if you think the LGBTQ uh, Q two SIA, I think I got them all there. Um, that this covers. Well, what what affects affluent cisgender white women? And yes, there are women of color in it, but it's not really talking about that. Even mm-hmm. uh, even America Ferrera's character, you know, she's, she has a white husband. You know, she like it. It's not. You know, you're you're kind of going. Yeah, this is this is all yeah. pretty safe. This is not really saying much. You know, feels there's hints totally of violence against on. women, but only mm-hmm. hints. It yeah. gets a little yeah. creepy, but just that's it. And mm-hmm. worse than that, it ends on the note, as your wife pointed out, Carla pointed out, Barbie still has to manage Ken's feelings. Barbie yes. has to explain to Ken why he's, they can't, nothing's going to happen, but... You know, Ken, I, I was unfair to you. I took you for granted. Even though a whole point of how they beat the boys is by using the feminine wiles, which is, like, offensive. It yeah. makes me think, Jim, I've told you this story, but I think it bears repeating here in this context. Sure. Uh, 20, I want to say 2012, 2013, 
several years ago, well, maybe a decade ago. I am a 40-something-year-old man in Shanghai, and a couple of attractive young Chinese women come up to me. And, hey, do you want to go on a, you know, they're very charming and friendly and pretty. And they're going, do you want to, you know, are you not, are you not from here? It's like, well, I'm one of a few <laughs> white people here. here. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Their English is pretty good. Do you want to go to a, a real genuine tea ceremony? And I'm looking around and I'm going, yeah, you're talking to me. And you're not, it's like, I know who I am. <laughs> these, these, these women are not hitting on me. There is no, this is like, yeah, you're, you, you, I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't dummies that'll fall for this. They're doing it for a reason mm. <laughs> that there are 40 something year old men who go, oh, that sounds like a great idea. They out. must love me. But, you know, it's, it's not like it's almost uniform. And that they lean into this, like that's part of the thing. That's how they get their power back is not um, not through calling patriarchy patriarchy and saying, hey, you're, you're all f***ing douchebags who've stolen from us. Um, but no, we have to play to their ego and manipulate them. And, and mm. then they're all just too stupid and then we'll be back in charge, you know. Even though it's like, hmm, I don't know if it play out that way, but okay. Yeah, no, it is. it is. It's a feminism that is like so limited, so boxed in. You know, mm. that would be to, uh, to uh, Walt uh, in the comments is wondering about the politics of it. And I'd say, yeah, it's 70s feminism like it mm -hmm. it does comment on some stuff, there, but it's all hints and like hints about race, hints about, you know, sexuality and, but never, never calling it out. Never like there's, I can't even say it's missed opportunities. It's mm -hmm. more, oh, we're just not going there. You know, the script yeah. came back from Mattel and the, mm -hmm. yeah, we have some notes. Barbie yeah. can't do that. Barbie can't be seen doing that. Barbie can't be seen saying that. Yeah. Well, so I'm we surprised can, even we still sell a lot of cans. Yeah, yeah. You well, know. some of the lines, like when she said, uh, "I don't even have a vagina to a crew of construction workers," I'm thinking, "Whoa, they got that one through." But uh, yeah, it's uh, well. I mean, but what did that mean? Yeah. What was that saying? Yeah. That it's a that she's a doll. Like there's yeah. there's nothing. There's no meaning there. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a meh joke. Yeah. Well, and then you know, the one Zach of the Zack Snyder one was infinitely better. Oh yeah. But one of the guys says that doesn't matter, <laughs> which is even kind of like. Ugh. But, uh, but um, I, I, I didn't read that scene that way because they seemed to me more like kind of weird. Oh, that doesn't matter. Like almost. Uh, we got to get out of this conversation. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, it could be taken a little more darkly, but uh, yeah. the, there was another cool line about the Godfather, <laughs> too, when she says, hey, let's restart this movie and talk all the way through it and explain it to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh. But, yeah. I there, mean, there's, there there's some good moments. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, like I, the, the serenade where where all the Kens are singing to all the Barbies, pushed by Maxbox, Maxbox, Matchbox 20 mm -hmm. uh, around the fake little fire yeah. with... Uh, paper mache and whatever. <laughs> and this is where maybe what you could say is every young man, well, mind you, I don't know, maybe young men are watching it going, yeah, I knew all this because mm. the world does change. Like, this is the thing. It's saying nothing risky. So is it just saying what we already know? That mm -hmm. young men, I mean, honestly, Jim, I wish some of this was, I wish this was in a movie when I was 15. Yeah. You know, absolutely. This this could have helped, you know. Um, but there are smarter TV shows. I'm thinking Sex Education on Netflix. Uh, mm -hmm. There's smarter TV shows that have been around for years that ha that have already walked through this. And and they're specifically aimed at teens and tweens and like that age bracket. So. Mm hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I mean, remember that scene even, you can you can argue that scene in, in No Hard Feelings where uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character makes some homophobic comments to some yeah. younger people. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that's even a little more, that's sort of, you know, I think maybe where this movie might have been able to go. But also, you know, the other thing too is... Y- Tonally, they don't sort of stick with one thing or the other. They they've got a foot in two different worlds. And speaking of Paul well, Rubin, side of maybe, <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking yeah. of uh, Pee Wee Herman, maybe if you know how uh, Pee Wee Herman or Monty Python, they were all in on the absurdist side of. Maybe if it stuck to the that absurdity, like maybe yeah. they just went full bore on the absurdity. You know, it feels like they held back, but if they they took that sort of Pee Wee Herman route and sort of went yeah. all the way through with it, maybe that would have made a more consistent well, uh, kind of movie. But that's it. It's like, that's why I, I think it's a key question. Parody or satire? Now, mm. notwithstanding certain, uh, <laughs> Sherry Flanders over at the Chicago Reader, Flanders, <laughs> speaking of The Simpsons, <laughs> searing social critique of like, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, for the states, maybe, yeah. <laughs> well, but not even this. It, it, the thing is, I'm, not even the states. Like, there are more. And and here's the thing: it's like they've achieved what they wanted to achieve. It looks like searing. Again, Jim, I, I come back to that. Um, uh, what's the? Uh, I come back to what I said earlier. The more I think about it, the more I think it's like, wow, this is a this is a store bought. This is a grocery store cake, grocery mm. store bakery cake uh, that gives you all the. It's a cake. It's got icing. It's got it's got all the component parts. But in no way, Jim, are I really don't believe that. Either of us, anyone is going like later going, mm, 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 mm. And I know I do love, I do enjoy picking on our our betters uh, in the crit in the critic space, but the, I will give them this. Just like us, we came out of the theater, we cut, we had fun. It's bright, yeah. it's flashy. You are set up to like it and shop for the things and of course these people have to have to move those clicks and and everything but i i do i believe uh miss flanders and some of these other folks might you know a year later be kind of going oh yeah yeah i I remember barbie what'd you say about it (laughs) Mm -hmm. can't recall moving on (laughs) like yeah you know again i go back to the five bloods you know which Oh, let's take a look here. You know what, Jim? No. Let's uh, let's find out. See how it did, uh, RT. Oh, for what? pardon my. It's not coming up right away. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. All right. Look at that <laughs> audience score. <laughs> but the tomato meter was still high because remember everyone was like you you couldn't criticize this film Mm -hmm. you know like everyone was saying it's wonderful although even there it's like the five blood is quite some undertaking by and large lee succeeds (laughs) even if along the way the story hits some cul-de-sacs oh that's an interesting euphemism (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness! From its sweeping jungle vistas to its full fat orchestral orchestral score from Terrence Blanchard, *Defy Bloods* often feels like an old-fashioned Hollywood adventure. What? <laughs> Gold? <laughs> Crying out loud! What did you bring along to carry all this gold back to America? This one's tiny suitcase? Yeah. Here's a uh, Remember Clarice. We were, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to figure Lowry, out how much they could carry. Um, uh, the Independent uh, in in England in the United Kingdom. The Five Bloods. She only gave it a three out of five. Still considered what? a tomato, right? 
uh, is so busy with ideas, thoughts, and passions that at times it feels like it's drowning in them. <laughs> Which I think is something you had mentioned back then, how it's oh, yeah. like how uh, Lee does tend to overstuff his films. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, back to this nonsense. <laughs> Back to this nonsense. Uh, let me let me ask you this. Okay, so we we know what the ending is. It's the the big. Hey, do the does do the Barbies get to be in charge? Do they overthrow patriarchy and go back to being in charge of Barbie Land? And the Kens relegated to well, whatever the hell they do, beaching. Mm -hmm. Beach off. Beaching. Which the is beach, pretty yeah. good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's, the, here's the question I have. They do have a bit of an epilogue. Where, of course, she is now, she wants to be a real girl. So it's become Pinocchio. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. where, where, honestly, Jim, was there any time that you were thinking, ah, Pinocchio? That, like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Almost well, you like know, tacked on at the end. I want to be a real girl. It, yeah. It struck me. Isn't this the second movie that Ryan Gosling is uh, made about dolls? <laughs> <It> was, uh, <laughs> he was married to that other one, Lars and the re what was that called? Lars and the real girl. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, no, it, that sort of. It, it sort of has occurred to me while we're talking, maybe the movies, and not to defend it, doesn't need a defender, it's made over a billion dollars, but uh, maybe it's just trying to do too much. You know, I think that that's, you know, it's it, it's got its own land, it's got this earth, it's got the Mattel uh, headquarters, um, you know, there's Pinocchio, there's uh, there's sort of, you know, Remember, the return only at to... the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got little flavors of this and that. I mean, it, you know, you brought up Lord of the Rings earlier, uh, like before we did this yeah. show even. And, you know, there's there's a lot of echoes of, of uh, other things that's, that have gone on before, like there is with any movie. But I don't know. It just seems like like they've tried to accomplish too much with this almost. Uh, yeah. I don't even think they've tried to accomplish too much. Mm -hmm. I think it's just they were hemmed in from the beginning just forever notes and some stuff got through. I am going to, I'm going to walk back a bit of my harshness. Uh, <laughs> there are moments, like just in the way all these guys want to be seen by Barbie. Mm -hmm. And that if they aren't, and they're forever posturing mm -hmm. with each other and they have their gangs and it's very posturing and the great bit about beach off you know yeah i mean there, there are moments and you can kind of see where yeah maybe that early that first couple of scripts where gerwig and bombback we're gonna throw everything in and then see what we're allowed to have yeah. and then just everything got peeled off like we're seeing the most basic structure of the film but not the none of what makes it good None of mm -hmm. what makes a movie good. Again, it's like, no, 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 no. That real genuine cream cheese icing, that's a little too rich for our blood. And uh, so we've our, some of our, you know what, our CEO doesn't like it. He thinks uh, cr real cream cheese icing is out to get him. So <laughs> here, this stuff, it's cheap, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, I think mm -hmm. that's, it, that there's... Yeah, everything got peeled away. Everything got stripped off. Um, mm -hmm. What I was wondering about, though, it ends, folks, for those who don't know. So she does. She becomes a real girl. She's now Barbara. Um, an illu uh, Well, not even an illusion. Uh, you know, she is the woman who actually invented Barbie. It was uh, for her da daughter, Barbara. So now she's... She's a real person. She's got a, an adult name. She's no longer Barbie, a toy. Mm -hmm. She's a real girl in the real world. And she has an appointment at the end. And it's uh, her, it's, it's, um, it's to see her gynecologist. Yeah, you're sort of led to believe that it's a job interview, but uh, yeah. It's, it's her gynecologist. What did you think of that ending? Is that, 
Yeah, what did you think I of had, that ending, Jim? Yeah, I thought it was kind of a neat twist, uh, um, uh, or something that you know, because they played it one way and it ended up being something different, and that was sort of the final grace note. And she's you know so proud to be there, and she has a big smile, and she said, "I'm here to see my gynecologist." Um, yeah. So, and, and again, you know, I don't think that is necessarily supposed to you know uh bounce off our hearts you and i <laughs> specifically but i think with a certain you know with half the audience or more than half probably it's it's gonna um be a be a kind of a, a sweet little note to end on but uh is yeah I, I thought it was kind of in uh, yeah i mean it's it, i mean it, yeah it plays towards <laughs> Well, it plays towards the, I mean, part of it is delivery, as as we've talked about yeah. all summer and with no hard feelings to, um, you know, a, a lot of this is in the delivery. So Margot Robbie is, is, you know, she almost seems like a teenager or something that she's experiencing yeah. for the first time. And, and a little bit of that Pinocchio r- real boy, even though it comes on in the last five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> essentially, like it's, it's or the last nowhere to be minutes. seen. Yeah. Like yeah, if, it was, if it was, if it was, because... Who's the one who would be happy to get genitals? Ken. Because Ken mm. is the one at the beginning is, no, no, I've got, whereas she's perfectly fine with that. Mm. So where is that change? And this is another problem with this film is she really barely changes at all. Like there's yeah. not much, if any, character arc. It's mm. all... And heck, if they did, if they centered the movie around America Ferrera's character and her daughter, hey, maybe you got something here. And mm-hmm. they end up in Barbie land. And Barbie helps them in some way. And Barbie grows a little or... Sure. Uh, but in this movie, Barbie's told everything. We don't actually... We see her learn a little in the real world, but mm-hmm. no real groundbreaking moments. Mm-hmm. And she gives up. It isn't, it's, it's got to be the girls who play with her. Like, she's still an object right up to the end of the movie. Like, with uh, some agency, but it's restricted in a lot of ways. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I, and that's well, why and... I think it bugs me. Because it seems yeah. so tacked on. It may have been in the original film, yeah. but they took out the setup. But mm-hmm. at any time, did you think, wow, she really wants to be a real girl and it, yeah, and experience death, experience cellulite? Like, have any, you know, that, hey, this is a part of growing. Have her foot arch go down and yeah, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Like, yeah, the... the, the yeah, no, I mean, it's a sweet moment. It's not necessarily set up properly or, you know, it's got the care. Again, delivery, right? And Margot Robbie can, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, but it, it, it's I mean, she's just amazing. great icing. Yeah. Great icing. Like a very sweet, mm-hmm. very sugary icing. But after you kind of go, wow, was that that good a cake? Well, you know, you know is and this it, actually yeah. giving us a cherry or is yeah. it a. There is no chocolate on this cake. Let's make it a strawberry something or other, right? And then all of a sudden, as you bite into the center, you get to, you cut, and it's like, oh, there's a big hunk of chocolate in there. Great. I like chocolate. Mm-hmm. No clue it was there. No uh, no idea why it's there. Yeah. Yeah. What's the I mean, point? I, to, for the ending, I mean, the thing that I find the most galling is that, you know, as Carla had pointed out, Ken doesn't change. Um, and he's got to be guided through it, and yeah. he comes up with no conclusions of his own. Like he's he's told that he's you know being a dick, but he doesn't. He there's no realization he is on dumb his own. As he's like mm. throughout yeah. the entire and, film. But there's no, and he doesn't even become self aware. There's no, no none of that kind of uh, self, uh, uh, none of that consciousness. And uh, at the um, end, like yeah. he becomes kind of a a weaker version of Michael Sarah's character, which you're like, okay, obviously the the gay friend, maybe. Yeah. Um, who, who kills but... a construction worker with a shovel? <laughs> it has to be said. 
<laughs> but which, which you, is you're never, kind of a dark moment. Yeah, there's. Yeah, I I do. See, I think the more tone. I think about this film, the less I think of it. Like mm-hmm. this is. The I mean. I'm not even sure it's a good Sunday afternoon film. So, and and this is ne- not necessarily what we the kind of question we answer on this show or ask, but. And I've, I'm away, thinking man. this of my own, my, uh, you know, to myself. Why is it? It's a runaway smash. Like it's made a billion dollars in yep. a month. Why? Like, how, and and it's not to counter any of our arguments, but no. Um, I I wonder how. I guess I should put it that way. Well, I, um, Jim, this is. <laughs> why does Avatar make money? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> like, the wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, runaway hit. Yeah. Um, Three hours of fireworks. You know, <laughs> it's there's plenty of <clears throat> mediocre films. And this is a yeah. mediocre film. Plenty of mediocre films that are hugely successful. Um, caught that, got lucky to a degree. Like, I mean, you... Busted clocks right twice every day, but I mm. would even say it is a great theater movie that managed to catch a little bit of the zeitgeist, maybe mm. a little, like just a touch. And in a year where it's not been a great year, like mm-hmm. again, I go back to when we were talking about Barb and Hyber before we saw any of these flicks. Mm-hmm. And it is one of those things where it's like, what is it? You know, is this an actual, wow, this is the uh, a sign of things to come? Or is it just dumb luck? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, myself, I, I got, I'm leaning towards, it's such a great theater movie. I don't mean it's good, but it's meant for a theater. Exper- um, experientially, yeah. Yeah. And it's a, why do Transformers make so much? Like Transformers yeah, movies are true. like <laughs> like <laughs> offensive, yeah. and yet they it takes five or six of them before you're finally fed up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I. I, I wonder if it's just that is the that is our future. Mm-hmm. Like less big movies, all uh, the, the big movies, theatrical movies will learn the lessons they need to from this. Mm-hmm. They'll go, yeah, sure, you can have the odd auteur. Like there's going to be people like Oppenheimer, no matter what. Um, no hard feelings, unfortunately, will be that the next one of those. It's going to be like Coda. It'll be straight. It'll festival circuit streaming. Hope mm. you find enough uh, to make that work. Meanwhile, Mattel is going. No. Let's make another one. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll, we'll have to look a little silly, but. Who, who the kind of the money, red? the big bags of money we'll be able to walk away with? <laughs> I can look a little silly. No one's really questioning anything. Like Who's this is be not the red questioning hippo? anything. Who's going to be the purple hippo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, it's you know the, yeah. the. I mean, there's been a lot of these. It's noteworthy because it's a a, a, a girl's toy. Mm. But. G.I. Joe, no one's going, wow, that was amazing. And it made money. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I think its success is as much to do with what was in the theaters up to this point. If we had had a real banger of a year, mm-hmm. I don't think Barbie would have done as well. Yeah. You know, if, if it had been, wow, I've been to four films and they've all been amazing. I think a lot of people and even... The critics, who a lot of them seem to think, Jim, that they are cheerleaders for film, especially the theatrical experience, uh, cheerleaders for uh, the the industry, and it's mm-hmm. like, what? No, <laughs> no, you aren't. Yeah, I mean, what do they well, give you? Nothing. Yeah. You get to maybe you get to see a movie a little bit earlier which means you have to bust your ass and come up with something reasonable to say overnight. Mm-hmm. 
or you might get taken off the list to see the next ridiculous nonsense. Yeah. And how much, mm. honestly, Jim, how much shit does a, like a paid critic have to watch to a point where maybe even yeah, Barbie's everything. just like, you know, this ain't bad. Yeah. I've watched a lot of junk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, what was yeah. the Avatar would be the last big money well so, reviewed yeah. <laughs> the wonder <laughs> yeah mission impossible oh. you know uh but um for it, really big yeah, yeah. Really it big is hits, nice think, to yeah. see that a uh picture aimed primarily at women mm -hmm. can be as successful you know that yeah. that means that there'll be other media <laughs> filmmakers with a a neat idea that could be sold to the big corporation saying, hey, this could be the next Barbie. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, does that benefit us? Maybe kind of, at least. Yeah, young women are seeing film, or the tweens are like, wow, there's, there are big name, big movies for us. Mm -hmm. But um, I do, uh, yeah. Jim, why don't we, I know you've got to be somewhere soon. I've actually got to pick up my daughter who's, Doing her Barbenheimer. <laughs> yeah. So why don't uh, we yeah. why don't we jump into final thoughts and sure. with uh, with uh, why don't you why don't you start us off here, my friend? Sure. Well, I mean, uh, the you know we're we're dumping on it a little bit uh, more well, than the, uh, <laughs> the earlier review um, that we had right out of the theater, and maybe that's how you know that kind of thing works. Well, so uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, uh, there are moments. Uh, it, it is a good cast. They, they give the, their all. Um, there's some, some pretty interesting musical numbers. So, yeah, it, it's, it's light. Uh, it's probably a, a good summer movie as well. Um, this is not something I'd probably put in on the, uh, you know, the old uh, uh, DVD, <laughs> the old Betamax uh in in mid-january but might not uh, or maybe i would I don't list know. for the year i don't think so no no but um yeah it'll be interesting to see sort of what uh, or it could be really if they make a dozen toy movies it could get really turgid here but uh anyway mm -hmm. we'll see what the legacy of this is is ultimately yeah. but I, uh, you know what now in its defense jim i don't think like we've seen a lot of toy movies already. This is mm. not new. No. Um, will we see a lot of junk toy movies aimed at young women and and girls? Mm. Probably. And you know, yeah, that is yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe watch. What my suggestion would be a, a little bit of a palate cleanser. Watch the GI Joe episode of uh, community which is uh, almost all animated and that's that's <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty bizarre and good one but yeah. Uh, yeah um here's here's my note and i mentioned it in our see it or skip it um i i would like and maybe this is once hopefully this this uh both the strikes will be over and that the writers mm -hmm. and the actors will get what they need um, and they're not asking for a lot. Um, yep. It is less. Their combined ask, Jim, uh, a great estimate I saw, saw by Steve Shives, their combined ask, given some extras, is less than eight Hollywood executives who combined make $750 million. It comes in around six, seven hundred. So okay. mm. to make eight, to make an industry eight better. Assholes, yeah, could split fifty million mm -hmm. and cover tens of thousands of workers, and make the world a better place. Make you know the yeah. creative arts exactly. well funded. You um, know, that said. Yeah. Uh, so right now we're being kind of uh, we're, we're 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 not seeing those interviews. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to the interviews because one of the interesting things I still think is interesting, uh, and I would love to hear uh, Gerwig, Bombach, Robbie, 
and America Ferrara. I could love to see one of those round tables where they were talking about that casting. Because I still think that casting of America Ferrara, this, you know, one who was put on, um, uh, commented on her physicality as a, hey, here's a normal woman. And a Hispanic woman, but not uh, a Spanish descendant, uh, Hidalgo. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this, uh, it, it, her, it, 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 and Margot Robbie. Um, one of the things I was excited was because Margot Robbie saw, like, said, yeah, I'll be in your movie. And I think it's that casting. There's a great comment in the film where Helen Mirren, as the narrator, narrator cuts in yeah. about normal women's bodies and blah, blah, blah. And, and she cuts in and a bit of voiceover is a note to producers. If this is the point you want to make, do not cast this woman in your movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great funny. little bit, but I think there's more to be said. And I do, I'll, I'll stick with what I said in our see it or skip it, Jim. I think that of all of this movie, the thing that people will talk about Years from now, papers will be written. Uh, again, I think, what was your comment about plate number 42? <laughs> Barbie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I, I do think that, and uh, and and maybe that's a note I'll, I'll leave it on. Uh, sure. Folks, I do want to, uh, once again, beg for your like, your subscribe, and last but certainly not least, ring-a-ding that bell. We will be back. Uh, hopefully, actually, on Monday, the night I've been promising and we've hardly ever achieved, but uh, really appreciate uh, Walt65, uh, his comments in the chat, and all mm -hmm. the folks that are lurking, watching. Go, go um, Bombers. <laughs> really appreciate you folks, uh, for folks signing up, and for those of you who come later, um, thank you all very much. Uh, Subscribe down there, and there'll be good stuff to watch over here. Goodbye. Good night, everybody.